Now, 50 years ago today, uh, there was a, a soccer match between uh, Celtic and Leeds United. It was in the semi-final of what was then the European Cup, but of course is now the Champions League, uh, on April the 15th, 1970. Uh, the first leg had been at Leeds, and Celtic won 1-0. They won the second leg at Hamden Park 2-1, in front of 140,000 people, I think it's the biggest crowd ever to watch a European Cup or Champions League game. And we're joined now by one of the men who played in both of those games, John Giles. John, 50 years, yes, it goes very quickly. Uh, <laughs> it sure and, does, yeah. Yeah, now let's uh, talk, this is a special request from one of our listeners who I think is a Celtic fan. But for, <laughs> I'd say so, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so because it wasn't uh, one of Leeds' uh, most memorable uh, games, but um, I remember at the time it was a huge, a big deal, the Battle of Britain, they called it. Uh, obviously, uh, the English League being so strong, I think uh, despite the fact that uh, Celtic had won the European Cup in 1967, Leeds were favourites. I think I backed them on the day. The first leg, John, uh, at Elland Road, you gave away a goal in the first minute uh, and it was hard work uh, after that. But there were extenuating circumstances. At the time, you'd drawn with Chelsea in the cup final, you'd had replays, and like all successful teams, end-of-season fixture pile-up, uh, had a part to play? Well, I, th I think so, Eamon. I mean, uh, first of all, I'd say that of the two matches, Celtic deserved to beat us. They played very well and deserved to beat us, Eamon. But we did we did get into a bit of a, a backlog, as you say. We had three. At one stage, we, we played Manchester United in the semi-final of the FA Cup, and we uh, the, the match on two replays. And then in between, uh, you know, we had the, the Celtic matches and then the, the cup finals themselves. Cup final itself, which it went into extra time and a replay, Eamon. So yeah. with all those things, but that's uh, that, that was that's the way it was. And as you know, those days you played the same team all the time. Yes, there wasn't uh, a, a big squad of players where you were, were rotating the, the teams as you, as they do today, today, quite rightly. But Celtic were obviously a top team, Eamon. And yeah. over the two legs, they were by far the better team. Now they they manager Jock Steen is a legend in the game John he'd built a great team first uh, British club to win the European Cup in 1967 uh, they were a wonderful team I mean Jimmy Johnson was is a name that stands out uh, but so many others uh, as well uh, Bobby Murdoch uh, Gemmell who scored a winning goal in the 67 final uh, they had some wonderful Bertie Ald, and in particular, um, the uh, Celtic fan who uh, is a regular listener. He asked me to ask your opinion about Bertie Ald, uh, who I know you rate extremely highly. He, he was a terrific player and a hard man. Uh, he was a terrific player, Eamon. Yeah, he could handle himself, as they say, and look after himself. Uh, he was a terrific player, Bertie. He was. Uh, I first played against him when he came. He, he was he was at Birmingham City, I mean, for a few seasons. Yeah. Uh, in in the early part, and then when Jock took, I think it was Jock, and he brought him back to Birmingham. He was a left winger uh, playing for Birmingham, a good left winger. Uh, but Birmingham weren't a very very good side. Uh, so whoever brought him, I don't know whether it was Jock or not, brought him back uh, to Celtic. But it was a great move, and he then played in the middle of the field along with Bobby Mordock. And uh, there were a brilliant combination between them. Yeah. But Bertie was a smashing player. He could really handle himself, I mean, He wasn't much bigger than me, uh, yeah. but he was a genuine, you know, really, really good midfield player. He was an experienced player at that time, uh, along with Bobby Murdoch. Bobby was also, uh, you know, a first-class player. Uh, and, and they were a great combination between them. Yeah. Uh, but the, but the, but actually the player that did his most damage, I mean, which you're probably coming to anyway, was 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 Jimmy Johnston. Yes, I especially mean, at Hamden, you know, because the, the, you say there was 140 thousand there because the, the, there was so much interest in the game. They took it from Celtic Park to Hamden Park, yeah, and there was 140 thousand, and there was about 15 or 20 thousand locked outside, yeah. I mean, which was amazing. Uh, and Jimmy Johnston tore us to pieces. 
Yeah. In the second, uh, in the second leg, uh, he was a right winger. He was, was a right winger. Absolutely brilliant. A right winger. Uh, he was a right winger at a time when wingers were the thing. You know, uh, every team had a w- had two wingers actually. Uh, yeah. But he was special, wasn't he? Oh yeah, Jimmy. Uh, he was an amazing player. I mean, you know, Jimmy. Jimmy was smaller than me. Yeah. And he was quick as lightning. And when he had the ball, I mean, dribbling. Uh, the ball was halfway up his leg. Yeah. You know what I mean? I do, yeah. And he could just drag the ball along as if he was running, as if it was stuck to his leg. Yeah. Which seems sometimes it looked like that. And we had Terry Cooper at left back, who was the England left back at the time, as a smashing player. And not just Terry, he tore him, you know, he just turned him inside out, as they say, in the game. Not him, every one of us. Yes. So to get the ball out to Jimmy, and not only us, I mean, over the years, he was, a, you know, a, a really brilliant player. But what a dribbler and, and a, a good passer to the ball. You know, when he got into a good position, he got a good cross in to yes. make goals. But he, him particularly on the night in Hamden uh, really, really tormented us. Yeah. He and was they, brilliant. They beat you 2 1 in that game. Now, yeah. I wanted to talk to you about, well, I want to talk to you about Jock Steen and also about uh, Don Revy. Um, Jock Steen, uh, you know, they won nine. Uh, league titles, which was a record, uh, nine on the trot. Uh, yeah. They won the European Cup. Um, and uh, he was a great uh, coach, John, a great manager uh, of players. He built that club up because before he went there, they hadn't had much success. Rangers had been the dominant uh, team. Uh, where does he stand, jo- Jock Steen, uh, in the great pantheon of managers, Shankly, Busby, Paisley, uh, Revy, of course, uh, Alf Ramsey. He belongs, and Bill Nicholson at Tottenham. They were a generation of fantastic managers who produced fantastic teams, weren't they? Oh, yeah. Oh, he'd be up there, eh? I mean, he, 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 he might be the best of them yeah. in many ways. You know, he, 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 they hadn't won the league for 12 years yeah. uh, when, when he went to uh, Celtic. Uh, and... You know, the, the, that, that's a long time for Celtic not to be winning the league. So he didn't take over a very, very successful team. Obviously, he had he had a history with the supporters and a great support in that. Uh, but the job he did there was, was great. I mean, I think the team that we, that played I played against in 1970, the one that, the, they actually didn't go on to win the Champions League that year yeah. um, or the European Cup that year. I, I, I think the 67 team was a better team. Right. There was a couple of a couple of changes, but that's by the way. But Jock, what he did uh, was incredible, and uh, you know all these players. We, we I think we spoke of before. Was born within a twenty or twenty five mile radius of Celtic Park. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't as if he was buying a lot of players and, uh-huh. and expensive players and that to do it. No. So his coaching and his management uh, was really, really top class. I think he had an attitude, I mean, that uh, you know, good discipline, good work work ethic. Home or away, I think he was going to play the same way. Yeah, and they were, have a go, have a go at the opposition. In other words, when we have the ball, we're going to go for goal. Yeah, and uh, he, he was he was a great manager, absolutely great manager. He was a Protestant, uh, which uh, had almost derailed uh, his ambition to manage Celtic uh, because, of course, the sectarianism uh, was really powerful up there. Uh, he he had a bad end. Um, at uh, Celtic, John, he um, he thought after all he'd done for the club that he could become a director um, and go into you know uh, and mm. get someone in t- to manage the team. He'd be a director, but uh, they wouldn't give him the job. They no, wouldn't, they they wouldn't give him the appointment, and they offered him a job in the pools office, which is selling. Uh, pool tickets, football pool tickets, yeah. which used to be the thing at the time. It was a very shabby way to treat a great man who had delivered so much to a great club. Yeah, uh, but I'm sorry to say, Eamon, it was typical of the times. Yes. You know, all the great managers that you mentioned there, Yeah, uh, the vast majority of them were as badly treated or almost as badly treated as Jock Steen. Yes. You know, there was a, a great manager at Wolves, Stan Cullis. Yeah, Eamon, of course. Uh, who was a fantastic manager. He was there for about 15 years. And uh, 
was just he had a nervous breakdown I think came back to work and, and he just thought he was sacked Yes. and I know years afterwards because these men weren't very well paid either no. uh, the, the supporters or somebody a friend of his organised a testimonial match because he was going to lose his house Yes. Yeah. Alf Ramsey finished up in a, 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 a hospital layman with dementia or something yeah he finished up in, uh, in what's now called a care home uh, yeah. he, w- he was the man who won uh, the World Cup for England uh, a great manager who was an innovator, won the first division, uh, which is, of course, now the Premier League, with Ipswich, <laughs> who were uh, from the back of beyond and never spent much money building that team. And he ended up in um, in a care home. Uh, Bobby Robson, Sir Bobby Robson, as he became, was paying uh, for his keep yeah. in... Uh, a care home. It's yeah. really, really shocking. Just to go back to Jock Steen, John, he went, um, ironically, uh, briefly to manage Leeds. Tell us did, about yeah. that. Well, yeah, he, well, the thing was, I mean, he, 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 like all the man at that time, he wouldn't have fe- felt, sorry, finished financially secure or nowhere near it. No. Right? I mean, what should have happened to Celtic that he should have had a big testimonial and given a job or an honorary job, whatever he was. In my opinion, that's what they should have done. They didn't. So he went to Leeds when Leeds were on the downward slope. Yeah. I, mean, um, I think I, I don't know what year it was. I think it was 1978. So, like, Don Revy left in 74. So this is four years. I think he took over from Jim, Jim, Jimmy, Jimmy Armfield. And Leeds, Leeds were, were were still getting it was still a good club and that big crowd, but they weren't winning anything at that stage, Eamon. Yeah. They were really on the downward, and I don't think he stayed there very long uh, yeah. before he went with the uh, managed the Scottish team. Yes, and he died um, uh, while watching uh, Scotland play Wales in Wales, uh, and his assistant at the time was. Alex Ferguson, who later, yeah. of course, became Sir Alex Ferguson, and uh, you know, is I saw on Match of the Day last week, they voted him. Ian Wright, Gary Lineker, and Alan Shearer, they voted um, Ferguson uh, the manager of the Premier League era. And uh, yeah. just in passing, it's impossible to argue with that, John, isn't it? I mean, he and Arsene Wenger, I think, were the last two. Uh, vying for the top spot, but you couldn't argue with what Alex Ferguson achieved at Manchester United. No, I mean, he, he, I, I don't know, he did it for about 25 years. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, he, he didn't start very well, uh, but got a grip of it. Uh, he was outstanding, I mean, to, to yeah. continue uh, the success that he had. Oh, again, he's, the year before, the year that he retired, he won the league uh, again. He didn't, he didn't retire when the team were, were, were fading off. Anywhere? No, no. Um, no, he was um, he was outstanding in what he did at at, um, at, at, at Aberdeen, wasn't it? First, yes, Aberdeen. And he he made he broke that uh, duopoly where yeah. that dominated Scottish football, Celtic Rangers, and he went on to win the European Cup winners' cup, yeah. beating Real Madrid. <laughs> yeah, so he, he had a good. No, he was. He, he'd have to be the outstanding manager of his time. Well, yeah. of, of a few times. I mean, it was about twenty-five years. I mean, and you hear, you know, you hear a lot of things in football. And as he, you know, as he is he gone past it? As he, as he, uh, has the game caught up with him uh, and all that? We hear a lot of that uh, uh, nowadays. Like in his case, he did it for twenty-five years. Yeah. So there was a lot. There was lots of players and managers and. Uh, Good managers in, in in that particular time, Eamon, who were had done well and were sacked and all the various things that we've seen over the years. Now Ferguson was outstanding manager for uh, for I, I I would say he he has been the best manager in the Premiership. Yeah. Now to go back to uh, that night, uh, fifty years ago, John Don yeah. Revy Don Revy had gone to Leeds. Uh, Leeds had never been a big club, had they, John? Uh, no, a very mediocre club, I mean. yeah. so, that, and that's been that's been kind to them. Mostly a second division t- team, I mean, yeah. that came up, stay up for a couple of years, and then go back and back back again. So, uh, no, they weren't they weren't anywhere near a and top club. One of the things that's interesting about Leeds, it's not a soccer city because the big game in Leeds is rugby league, correct? 
Oh, it is in that in that area, Eamon. You yeah. know, yeah, Yorkshire, Yorkshire particularly, particularly around the Leeds area. Uh, rugby, rugby league is is the big thing. Yeah. Now, why did you go there? Because Revy was a, in his own way, a hugely influential figure in English football. He was coming in uh, when, uh, say, Busby Nicholson, uh, their era was passing. Uh, and he came in with new ideas and had been uh, a centre forward, played for Manchester City. He, used, he invented a role, a deep lying centre forward. At least that's what I remember of him. Uh, yeah. But he was a, a deep thinker about the game. I, he was, I mean, yeah. He, he had a lot of, he had a good few clubs. You know, he started with Leicester and he was at Hull, he was at Sunderland, uh, Manchester City. Leads and, and and they 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 call it the uh, the Revy plan. Yes, and that's the, right. You know, journalists were always looking for things. But what it was actually uh, in those days, if you were a centre forward, you wore number nine. If you were a right wing, you wore number seven. Yeah, that's the way it worked. Well, and what the Revy plan was, he, he had a number nine on his back, Eamon, and played as a midfielder. <laughs> a bit like for me now today. No, he'd be more in the middle middle of the field, creating right, a bit okay. more in the middle of the field than for me. Right. No, I mean he was he wasn't a centre forward at all. Right, he was a midfield player, and it just so happened, for whatever reason, they put number nine in his back, and and it became the Revy plan. Yes, uh, and he he was a very good player. Very that was good Manchester midfield. City. I think they won the FA Cup, didn't they? Yeah, they they lost it one year and they won it the next year. So he he had a good. He probably had, he had his most successful time at Manchester City, along with Barnes. Um, yeah. Um, I can't think of his first name now, um, but he, he was a terrific player between them uh, uh, in in the middle of the field. Bobby John, they were very, they had a very well good lot of players, Eamon, I mean, mm. uh, at Manchester City at that time when they, when they won the cup. But he was the big thing. He was he was footballer of the year in 1953 or four around that particular time, Eamon. I mean. He was a top class player. The his philosophy and his attitude to the game, John. Uh, what was it? Um, if you can describe it, I mean, one thing for sure, it was about getting great players like yourself, Billy Bremner, Norman Hunter, uh, Eddie Gray, uh, Peter Lorimer, um, and Jack, Jack Charlton, um, not necessarily Gary Sprague, the goalkeeper, God rest him, but he he, he had a great, uh, and he had a lot of young players come through when you left United and went there. Yeah, he was um, he, he he was different, Eamon, in in terms of like when I went to Manchester, when you went to Manchester, it was part of the Busby Babes, where where Busby was one of the great managers of all time, as we know. But what he, what he introduced was he had a great team in nineteen forty eight and won the, the league in fifty two. But then he introduced the Busby Babes. He was the first, I think, in the old days, Eamon, you could only take two outstanding players on the on the gra- on the in the club. Yeah, you know what I mean, and what Busby did, and, and this is what I believe this anyway. Two outstanding young players. Young players. That's the most you could yeah. sign. But he signed the best in England, Ireland, Scotland, Wales, and put them on the ground staff. Yes. So they weren't officially a, 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 a footballers; they were officially ground staff workers. So he got, you know, like the Duncan Edwards who came in the Midlands, Bobby Charlton from Newcastle. But that's what I think. That's what Busby did, and Busby had the philosophy: right, you go out and play. Uh, and 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 that was it. Now, when when Don Revy took over at Leeds, all the, you couldn't do what Busby did uh, in terms of all the teams that caught up with him then in, in signing the young players. And Leeds yes. weren't an attractive uh, club by any means in relation to Arsenal and uh, Manchester United and Manchester all the top clubs. Yeah. So he got he he, he got. I've always said about Damon. If uh, I don't think Mass. Busby, the great manager, could have done what Don Don yeah. did at Leeds. Right. Right. So we got like so Norman Hunter, Paul Reaney, Paul Madeley, uh, Terry Cooper. Yeah. These lads wouldn't have got into Old Trafford inside the ground in my time. Right. Right. Yes. But he got them and he worked with the him and Sid on and that's got they worked and worked at them on them to teach them the right things, the right habits, the right training, to really, really work hard on them, to turn them into the players that they were. I went there in, in 63, where they, 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 they were in the second division. 
but it had made a run at it at for promotion from the Christmas of that p- previous season, Eamon. Yes. But these were all young players. Norman Hunter was 19, uh, Paul Rini, 12 Coop, Teddy Coop. These were all 19, uh, 19 years of age with a great attitude. And one of the big things he did do, uh, to, which made the club, in my opinion, he bought Bobby Collins from Everton. Yes. Eamon. Bobby Collins was one of the great players. We talked about Celtic earlier. He was a great Celtic player for about 10 years. Yes. Went to Everton for five years. He came to Leeds when he was 32. Yeah. Now, he was, a, he was a hero of mine from the time I was a kid because I used to see the Scottish League and sometimes Celtics coming to Dublin. Yeah. I thought he was great. And he was great. Midfield player, I should say. Yeah. Yeah. Midfield smaller than me. Yeah, and I played against him, believe it or not. Did you? I yeah. did, yeah. I, I think, I'm not sure where he was. At the, I think he, but, yeah, he went to Bury after. Yeah, I played against him. He was a tough little man. He was a great oh, player. Yeah. yeah. He was a great player. But he set the trend at Leeds when I went there. Amen. Yes. I went there in six. I was 22. Norman Hunter was, was 19. Billy Bremner was, was 19. Paul Reaney was 19. Terry Cooper was 18, 19. These were all young players that wouldn't have got into Old Trafford. Yes. But the work ethic... Bobby Collins driving it turned them eventually, Paul Madeley, into great players, in yes. my opinion. Yes. So Don did, in many ways, Eamon, he, he did a, 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 a bigger job than some of the other great managers that we mentioned. Because yes. Jock Steen was a great manager, but he had a history at the club, and they had a great history at the club, and a great following at the club. Like when Don came to, to Leeds, they, they weren't a traditionally great club by any means. In fact, no. in my first match, which was against Berry in 1963, I think there was about 15,000 people at the match. Yes. So there was no, there was no history there. He built the history, uh, Don, on, on his, on his own. Uh, you know, Manchester United, but Busby did, did, did the same. And sure. Man- yeah, yeah. great managers are great managers, but for different reasons. But in my opinion, and, and only, he asked me to talk about Don. Don did one of the, one of the great jobs in football, Amy, to do what he did. And what attracted you, John, to, to go there? Because you wanted, you asked for a transfer, you wanted to go, uh, and you were going from a team that had just won the cup, one of the biggest clubs in the world, and you were actually going into the second division. I remember when you went, you were going yeah. to a team in the second division. What was it that uh, attracted you? That engaged you so, so, but, but, so but much. But the first thing was, I mean, I'll go back a little bit. Uh, I, first of all, I wanted to leave Manchester United. Yeah. And that goes back to a se- the season before, just two seasons back, where I played in the semi final of the Cup against Tottenham Hotspur at uh, Hillsborough. And this was their great team with Dave McKay, Danny Blensford, John White. Uh, and they beat us three, I think it was 3-1. And I had a nightmare, Eamon. Yeah. I was hopeless. I was, I was only 21. And I was playing in the middle of the field as the main, the main man. Bobby Chatton was on the left wing, actually. Yeah. And uh, when I look back on it at the time, I wasn't ready to do the job. Yes. Right? I was only 21. I was playing against John White, Danny Blanchard, Dave McKay, and I had a terrible game. We got beaten. And Matt lost confidence in me. Yes. Right? Never ever spoke to me after the match after that match. Yes. It never said, look, John, you're young. Or you're, and and uh, it, in the summer, they signed Dennis Law, and I push, was pushed out to the right wing, which I played on the right wing. And I couldn't do right for doing wrong. Amen. Yeah. Whatever I did, if I came inside, I should have gone outside. I had a really, really bad time with Matt Busby at that time. Really bad time. And uh, luckily enough, I played in the cup final that year. Nobby, Nobby Styles got injured. Nobby would have played instead of me. I wouldn't have been in the cup final team. Yes. In that 63. was 63, yeah. And we won. And actually played well. I, I was relaxed before the match because I thought, well, I can't be that bad. I can't be that bad in every match. So going on to the pitch in the 60, I was actually quite quite uh, comfortable. Anyway, we won, won. We won, as you know. We won. We beat Leicester. And I played, I played okay. Uh, and then the charity shield came around. We were, were beaten. And the next match, he called me over. And when Matt Busby was leaving out of the team, he used to say, <laughs> how do you think you're playing, son? And most players would say, mm, I could do better. I agree with you. I'm leaving you out. Yeah. Right. So when, when, when I, uh, I sort of confronted him, which was cheek to Matt Busby, he said, I'm leaving you out. And I said, well, how do you think I played? And he said, I thought you played reasonably well. I think I should be playing. No, well, you're out. And that was it. That was a real fallout. Yes. Right. But I knew then, like starting the next season, Eamon, I, 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 I couldn't go through it again. Yes. So I actually asked for a transfer. 
Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And in those days, nobody was supposed to ask for a transfer I at Old Trafford. <laughs> right. I'm, I'm Matt, like when you're asking for a transfer, if you ask the manager looking for a transfer, there's two things he can do. Try and talk you out of it. Or he'll tell you, he'll put your request before the directors. Yeah. So when I asked Matt for the transfer, he said, well, any hesitation, I'll put your request before the directors. Yeah. So I knew I was on my way. And yes. Now, this is a long-winded thing as to why no, I was no, I, I think it's important because it's important to say at this stage that um, uh, when you went, uh, after you'd gone and proved yourself to be a great player at Leeds, Matt Busby did uh, say that the biggest mistake he made in all, all his managerial career was to let John Giles leave Old Trafford. But go on. Because I, yeah, I want was, the yeah, question... It was six, it was six years after I left Diamond. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, that's, but, and, but you asked me the reason, why did I go to Leeds? Well, the main reason I went to Leeds was Bobby Collins. Right. That's fascinating. Because I did, yeah. like, like most players you're watching, they did make a run name and from Christmas to the end of that season in 1962-63. Yeah. And almost got promotion. Right. Right. So I knew there was something good happening there. And I thought, well, if Bobby Collins is there, it has to be right. Yes. Or he wouldn't be there at that particular time. And uh, as I said, I did want to leave. And I mean, obviously, when 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 you're in a position with the manager, I was Matt Busby. There was, I lost confidence in me, and that was it. I yep. needed somebody to have confidence in me, and I thought, well, if somebody buys me, then they must rate me, yes. and that was one of the, uh, the, 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 the. I wanted to go, but I wanted to go. I went to Leeds. I was only two days on two two days on the transfer list, and uh, because Bobby Collins was there, and I knew they were going in the right direction. Right. So when you leave a name, and as you know, you left. It's it's a chance. You don't you're taking a chance on it. I had no idea that Leeds would be as successful as they were. No, no. But at that particular time I needed I had, I knew I had to leave Manchester United and they were the club that came in for me. Right. And that was the last time you lost confidence, I can tell you that. <laughs> uh, you you quickly found it. Um just to uh, finish, John, and it's fascinating especially for the many many Leeds United fans that uh uh like to talk and hear about their club. Uh, the the particular quality that Revy had, the drive he had, John, um, yeah. and his kind of his ability to mold and develop that group of young players. Uh, when they when a team is uh, built on such solid foundations, and I think it was true of that Leeds team, it's the, the roots go very deep and the bonds and the camaraderie uh, is, is very, very strong. And that was a feature of that team, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, it was It was huge um, in, in, in the spirit. You know, yeah. you talk about morale, what is morale? It's very hard to describe morale. Uh, but the morale in, in the dressing room through Don, who had brought up these young lads, like eventually the, the lads that came into the team, like it was David Harvey, Daddy Sprague, Paul Reaney, Paul Madeley, Eddie Gray, Peter Dormer, uh, Terry Cooper, Norman Hunter. These were all lads that came through together. Yes. As pals, most of them. I mean, you yes. know, I, I was only 22 when I went there. Uh, so I was, I was quite young, but I was a bit older than, than, than those lads. But they had, they had a great, starting off, a great work ethic, a good spirit. Uh, and Don created that, like all the all the great managers do. He created that in the in the club. Now let me. And I noticed it straight away when I went, you know, because yes. I came from a star-studded Manchester United team, and they, I have to be quite honest, Damon, they didn't mix up well. No, they together. didn't. I was there at the time, and the you team, were there. Team so spirit you know, was awful. Yeah, it was terrible. You know, yeah, yeah. And so, the, like, they didn't mix up well. When I went to Leeds, it was. It was Norman Hunter was nine. They were all young, young lads. I was, I was, I was quite young myself. So, but, 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 but he, he built that and kept it. So, as as the players got older, I mean, they became better players, obviously. But they, but they've been coached in the right way with the right principles from day one. I always said about Don Revy, uh, and you talk about Matt Busby and Don Revy. Matt couldn't have done what Don Revy did. Yes. Do you know what I mean, I mean Because yeah. he had the best players and he didn't have to coach. Now, Jimmy, Jimmy Murphy was a great coach, a great influence. But, but Norman Hunt and these lads wouldn't have got into Old Trafford in yes. my day. Yes. You just wouldn't have got in. Yeah, I understand so, that. So they yeah. made them. But I must say, though, when, when we got to 68, 69 after seven or eight years, if Matt had taken over then, I think we probably would have won more trophies. Yeah, that's very, very interesting. I, and I know exactly why. Because he would have let you fly. Yes. Yeah. 
yes. in, a, in a way that Don wouldn't let go. No, no. Yeah. What happened with Don Emmett? Because it happened. See, the time passes by so quickly. What uh, what got us to where we were? We got promotion the first year I was there. Not I was there. But we got promotion that year, and we we we, we, we ran Manchester United all the way on goal difference to win the league and beaten by Liverpool over over an extra time in the cup. That's yeah. the first year we were promoted. Wow. Now, that was effort and goal and team spirit and and, and that right. Yeah, we never lost that. But when we got to sixty eight, sixty nine. We were all seven or eight years older. We were a mature team. And I'm, I don't want to be critical of that, but I don't think he saw it. Yes. Because time goes by so quickly. Do you know what I mean? He still like saw... We had a team talking yes. around Sheffield United, for example, and, and say in, in 1970. We spent a lot of time talking about Leeds United. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And and because uh, I, I came in the Matt Busby situation. I remember saying to Norman one time, walking out of the meeting, it's not the same team we beat five nil six weeks ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. So what Don, what, what made Don great was this. But but uh, but and I, I don't want to be critical of him. No, no. But I'd have to say that when we got to that particular stage, actually in in nineteen sixty nine six uh, sorry seventy one seventy two season, I mean, we got to Christmas and we were out of the running for the league. We were yeah. way behind in the league. And I remember Don having a meeting. He said, "Right, we're going to forget about the league." And concentrate on the cup, right? Yeah. So that was from Christmas of seventy one to the end of the season. Amen. In seventy two, seventy one, seventy two season, we played the best football. Yes. You've ever seen. Yeah. Because he was. And he we, wasn't we needed obsessing. to draw Wolverhampton to win the double. We went on to. He just. He just said, "Well, and that's what we did. We went out and played." Yeah. And that's yeah. it. Like you might have seen on the television, we beat Southampton in seven one, and yeah, we beat yeah, Manchester United yeah, five yeah. one. Yeah. We were we were absolutely brilliant. Yeah, it's, at, it's, at that, because he just said uh, go out and play. Yeah, and you know I think uh, Matt Busby had had that attitude. I think Jock Steen had it with his team. Yeah, I think Shankly had it with his team. Yeah, you know there's a rumor about Shankly that when say West Ham were coming in, he used to be outside watching them coming in. He back in the dressing. You're going to kill them. <laughs> yeah. If you're out on the yeah. piss last night, you're just going to kill them. You're going to run over them. <laughs> yeah. And he had the players to do it. It did, and West Ham probably were on the piss the previous and they night. They probably were. No. He wasn't paying them any respect at all. You know what I mean? I want to... But Don did what he did and what he did. I mean, I yeah. do think he did one of the great jobs in football, there's no doubt. Right. I just want to ask you a final question, Don. I know Leeds United fans and all football fans would love me to ask you. Uh, you and Billy Bremner were a fantastic partnership a legendary, really, partnership in the history of the game. Um, how great a player was Billy? Uh, what type of energy and 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 imagination did he bring to the game? Um, he, he was incredible, uh, Eamon, in that Billy wasn't a great trainer. Right? Yeah. He, he, you know liked I mean? to, we he liked to drink as well. <laughs> Sorry? He liked to drink as well. And he couldn't hold his drink, I mean, he'd, he'd get drunk on <laughs> a packet of wine gums, you know. But, but he, yeah. he'd, he'd, when he was, if we were doing a, 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 running around the, the pitch, for example, you know, he'd be last. Yes. Him and Big Jack would be last. Yeah. You put the ball out, I mean, and, and he'd stay there forever. Yes. Once yep. he had the ball, and he, he was from, he's the most confident player I ever played with. Yes. He was always going to be the star. Yeah. I mean, if you look at his career, the spectacular goals he scored in big competitions, I mean. Huge goals, yeah, I do you know, remember. I think he scored yes. goals in three semi-finals we won. He scored against Saskia Celtic that night that we're talking about, a terrific goal. But it was no good to us in the end. But he was, he was the most confident lad. He was always going to be the star of the game. You yes, know, yes. and he wanted to be the star of the yes, game. Yes, you know, with like with Norman Hunter and uh, Paul Maley and that, we had to live with him a little bit as well. Yes, yeah, you know what I mean. I do. Yeah, he'd, he'd, he'd want to show off, but 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 he was effective. Yes, you know, he scored great goals. He made delivered, goals. as you say, John. There's something special about a guy who always delivers on the big day when you really need it. Not, it's not luck, Eamon. No, but he put he put he put he going onto the pitch. He'd want to do that. Yeah. Yeah, he had yeah. that in his head. That was yeah. the confidence he had yeah. in himself. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm going to take this occasion. It's going to be my occasion. And it's, yes. it's a phenomenal yeah. quality. That for every match, I mean, that was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and Revy loved him. Yep. Revy, uh, lo Revy loved him. He'd, oh, he, he could, he could, Billy could misbehave, and he, and he did. He did on a few occasions. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, well, all the great... 
a lot of the greats did. Jimmy Johnson fam- famously did as well when he went out in a rowing boat. <laughs> What's well, Scotland? What's well, Scotland? Well, him, and, him, and, him, and, him and Jimmy Johnson were big pals. <laughs> yeah, and they, Scotland were preparing for the World Cup, but that's another. Yeah. That's another day story, John. It's been another an absolute... day story. No, but he was he was a terrific player, I and yeah. he, he could he had the confidence to do it. And like a lot of players can have the confidence to do it, and they do it they do it when it's their day. Yeah, you know he made it his, his day. day. Yeah. Okay, John, it's been an absolute joy talking to you this morning. Fifty years after you suffered a defeat at Hampden Park, and um, I'd like to thank uh, all our Celtic listeners, um, and particularly the one. A gentleman who uh, asked us uh, to commemorate Celtic's great victory in the Battle of Britain against Leeds United. But we've gone on to talk uh, more about Leeds than about Celtic. But I'm sure uh, all our listeners who love football and the many Leeds fans who are out there uh, won't be too displeased.